Yo, what is going on, guys? It's Boy Nick here, back again with a brand new video today. The day has finally come. We're finally going to review Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which is the first film in Phase 5 of the MCU. This film's been delayed for a while, and by the time this movie comes out, it would have already been out for two weeks. I'm sorry for the delays, I just had some stuff going on. And for those of you who are new to the channel, I recently just spent this whole series where I reviewed every other single MCU movie up to this release. And so if you guys want to go check that out, I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description. But yeah, I can't wait to talk about this movie. I had the privilege of going and seeing it last weekend. So let's talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. So Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania was once again directed by Peyton Reed, who directed the previous two movies. And our returning cast is still awesome. Uh, I wrote that Paul Rudd crushes it once again as Scott Lang. I love Paul Rudd in this role. I feel like they really nailed the casting with Paul Rudd in this movie. And I feel like they just continue to show that with every single Ant-Man movie. And I'm just glad that Paul Rudd did a great job again. And he had a lot to do in this movie, which was cool, considering that the last movie he took a little bit more of a backseat, sort of. But... I know, I'm just glad that Paul Rudd got a lot more to do this time, and he did a great job. And Michael Douglas, once again, was really great as Hank Pym. Michael Douglas is another one of these actors who I say in the MCU, he was great for Hank Pym. And every single movie, he's done an excellent job, and he continues to do an excellent job in this movie. And I'm so glad that we got to see some more of him, and that he wasn't just tossed to the side. Yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer is given more to do as Janet Van Dyne, which is cool, considering we spent the last movie getting her back, and now that we have her... Uh, she's given more to do, and she actually plays a very interesting role into the story, which I'm not going to talk about here, as I'll talk about that in a spoiler section, which you guys can skip over that if you want, but they actually gave her a lot more to do in this thing, which I thought was really cool, considering that this is like her first time being like a real central uh, importance to the movie. Yeah, and Evangeline Lilly also has some great moments as Hope, and I'm going to talk about more about Hope in the spoiler section of this review, but she still does a good job. Her chemistry with Paul Rudd's great, and it was cool to see Ant-Man and the Wasp team up again. Now here's where we get to some of the fun stuff. Catherine Newton was really good as Cassie. And whenever I heard that they were going to get a new actress for Cassie, I mean, first of all, it made sense considering that it's been years since what happened with the blip. And I know that the, the actor that they hired for Endgame is not the same one here. And so I was kind of wondering how she was going to do, but Catherine Newton actually gives a really good performance as Cassie, in my opinion. I thought she was really charming. She actually kind of reminds me of how Paul Rudd portrays Ant-Man. Like they, they very much seem like... Yeah, that's very much his daughter, and she did a great job in the movie. Also, the fact that her character actually has an arc over these movies, and, and you know, they're actually giving Cassie more to do as opposed to just being Ant-Man's daughter. I actually appreciate that they did that with this movie. Now, everything that I heard about Jonathan Majors as Kang was true. Jonathan Majors was awesome as Kang. We did get to see a little bit of him in Loki, if I'm not mistaken, and this one he's the full-blown force to be reckoned with as the villain in this movie. I won't go into spoilers here, but Jonathan Majors was awesome as Kang, and I'm pumped to see what they do with him for the future. This, this is a great story and introduction to Phase 5. I feel like Phase 5 is kicking off really strong with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. There's a lot of really cool stuff that happens in this movie that I'll talk about more in the spoilers, but man, I just think this is a really great start to Phase 5, and I can't see where Phase 5 goes from here. You know, there's really cool action sequences in this movie. Ant-Man's always had great action sequences, whether they're big or small. And there's some really interesting ones in this movie that if you guys have seen the movie by now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But man, the action sequences in this movie, like, they continue to surprise me with Ant-Man. I think that's a good thing. There's also great humor all around. That's one of the things I love about Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp is that they're very easygoing, fun movies to watch, very lighthearted. And this one is very lighthearted, and there is still some great humor in it. However, I also wrote underneath that that there's a new gritty tone to Ant-Man, which I like. I like the fact that they actually kind of, like, took some risks and actually decided to up the ante on it and make it a little bit more gritty but they still keep the lightheartedness of the first two in there, and so I thought they pulled that off very, very well. Yeah, and I won't go into it too much, but there's great concepts with the quantum realm in this movie, and if you guys haven't seen the movie, I highly suggest going and checking it out, as the quantum realm is really interesting. There's some great concepts with it. Now, as well as this movie flows very nicely. It's very nicely paced, and I felt like all the tones flowed very well together. It's a very nice, easy, flowing movie. I do have a few flaws with the movie, but it's not really something that bothers me all too much. In fact, I only have two of them written down. I wrote that it's a very CGI-heavy film, which isn't necessarily something that uh, is bad for me, but I know that may not be everyone's cup of tea, and that's perfectly fine, because I know there's some people who prefer practical effects over visual effects, and that's totally normal, but, you know, for me personally, the CGI doesn't bother me at all. Uh, it doesn't really take me out of it, really, because I kind of understand that this is a whole weird world, so the CGI didn't bother me, but I'm just saying it's probably going to bother some other people. And one of their kind of flaws of this movie is I kind of felt like Wasp took somewhat of a back seat in this movie. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, as I feel like Ant-Man was the main focus of the movie. It's just that in, like, the first one, it's all about Ant-Man, and the second one, it's about the two of them together. However, I felt like she kind of led it just slightly more. And I kind of would have liked to have seen her and Ant-Man do slightly more together in this movie. 
But at the end of the day, it's fine. I mean, the the, the scenes that we see with Hope are great scenes. I, I understand I kind of I kind of would have liked to have seen her more, but that's just a small little thing that like doesn't matter all too much. It's minute. Now I'm going to briefly go into some spoilers. These are things I'm just going to go through quickly. If you don't want to see these spoilers, skip over this chapter. You can go straight to my rating and my grade. Uh, I wrote that I liked what they did with Modok. The fact that they actually brought back Darren Cross and they actually like he had more time to shine in this one. Because Darren Cross was kind of good in the first Ant-Man. I thought the scenes with... Well, I liked Darren Cross whenever he became the Yellow Jacket. But Darren Cross beforehand, I kind of like what they did, but I felt like we didn't get to spend enough time with him, so we didn't see the full-fledged force that he could have been. They actually brought him back with this one and turned him into MODOK, which at first I was kind of just like... Not sure what to think about that, but I actually kind of like what they did with MODOK. I don't know, they actually made Darren Cross more memorable to me, and I like the fact that MODOK actually became a good guy at the end, and I love the scene with him and Cassie. That was one of the things I wanted to talk about earlier, is that Cassie actually, like, has an arc, and she actually, like, helps Darren, like, become a better person. I actually like what they did with MODOK. I wasn't too sure of it at first, but I actually did like it. One of the other things about MODOK that was interesting for me was that he looks ridiculous. I remember thinking to myself, I was like, they know he looks ridiculous, right? But then whenever they start making jokes about him, I was like, okay, the people in the movie know he looks ridiculous. That's fine with me. That was like, that was the one thing I was worried about, is whether they weren't going to think he looked ridiculous. But the fact that they bought into his ridiculousness, then I bought into it. So for me, I like what they did with MODOK. I also wrote Kang Dynasty question mark, because that's going to be the name of the next Avengers movie. And we very clearly see that at the end, Kang has like multiple, multiple Kangs in like a whole stadium or whatever. I think that's insane. And I can't wait to see what they do with that in the future because Kang seems like a serious force to be reckoned with. And I'm really excited to see what they're going to do with him in the future as I feel like he might be the main villain of this new multiverse saga. And and so that was in like the mid credit scene and then the post credit scene, we see Loki and Mobius, which makes me excited for Loki season two. It teased a little bit more towards that. I'm not going to talk about Loki in this, in this review. I'll talk about Loki in its own separate review in the future. But it was really cool for me to see that they're still, like, showing some stuff with that. Like, oh, okay, Loki and Mobius are still... We still got some stuff to do with them, and that made me excited. So overall, Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania is, in my opinion, a great introduction to Phase 5. I can't believe that there's critics who don't like it. My only guess as to why maybe some of them didn't like it is because of the CGI-heavy stuff. I mean, I might be wrong. I might have to look into it. But overall, I really enjoyed Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania. I know that most fans did, too. And that's really all that matters. If we enjoy it, then... That's all that matters. I mean, that's what Marvel's looking for, right? And so, yeah, I really enjoyed Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania. I highly recommend checking this out because it's a great start to Phase 5. It's got a new gritty tone, but it's easy going. It's a great film overall. I'm giving it an overall rating of an 8.7 out of 10, and I'm going to give it an overall grade of an A-. So that was my review of Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, I do actually want to review some more Marvel stuff in the future. I have not reviewed any of the Disney Plus stuff aside from the holiday special when that came out. I am planning on doing reviews for all the Disney Plus TV shows and specials. Uh, it's closer to the time that Secret Invasion comes out, so that actually might be pretty soon. And there's some more Marvel stuff that I will talk about in the future, and something I'm actually working on right now is I'm going to make a video where I actually rank all the MCU films that have come out so far from Phase 1 to Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania, so I can't wait to do that. And be on the lookout for that, it's going to be a fun video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get notified about my latest videos, leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought, and if you guys are new to the channel, make sure that you check out my series in which I reviewed every single MCU film up to this point, and uh, yeah, it's been it. Peace!